Hello everybody, we are back with another one of Mr. Deeping Science Lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book, a pen and some graph paper. If you haven't got any graph paper, then on the worksheet we've got some tables which are going to help you with today's lesson and we've got some graph paper printed on there too. In your books I'd like to get down today's title which is Continuous and Discontinuous Data and for your starter activity I would like you to tell me what characteristics did these twins inherit from their parents and how would you describe the differences between these siblings. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. Okay are we all done? So what characteristics did these twins inherit from their parents? Well they've got the same eye colour, they've got the same skin colour, they've got the same natural hair colour. So how would we describe the differences between these two siblings? Well they are different sexes. One's a male, one is a female. One has a beard, one doesn't. They've got different hair lengths and they are different heights. There is variation even between these siblings. In today's lesson, we want to describe the differences between continuous and discontinuous data. We want to calculate some mean and median averages of a continuous data set. And we want to be able to draw bar charts or histograms to represent discontinuous and continuous data. So what sort of variation within a species would be considered continuous variation? Well, this continuous variation is any variation that takes any value within a range. This includes things like height, because you can take the smallest person and the tallest person and everyone else would be between them. They would have a height between the smallest and the lowest. And they could have any value between that range. And you could measure it in centimeters, you could measure it in millimeters, and you could measure it in 0.5 of a millimeter, and you could measure it in even smaller increments if you had accurate enough equipment. It also includes mass, the length of your arm, the length of your leg, and your foot size. Not shoe size, foot size. And we'll talk about why shoe size isn't continuous variation a little later on. So now we're going to look at a data set which shows some continuous variation. A student has collected some raw data and it shows the height of all the students in their class. And this class has a total of 29 students. What I want you to do is to calculate the mean average and the median average of this data set. Now there's quite a lot of numbers in this data set, so make sure that you check your answer after you've finished. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. If you got your averages, let's start with this mean average. The first thing we've got to do is add all of our numbers up together. And when we do that, we get 3,485. The next thing that we need to do is to divide this number by how much data was in our data set. And there was 29 pieces of data. So we take our 3,485 and we divide it by 29. And when we do that, that gives us 120 0.1724. Now in science, we like our answers to two decimal places. So I'm going to find my decimal point in my answer and I'm going to move two spaces to the right, which takes me just past that seven. I then need to determine whether or not I'm going to round up or round down. And to do that, I'm going to look at the next number, which in this case is a two. Now, if this number was five or above and I was to round up, then that seven would become an eight. But because this number is four or below, then that seven is going to remain a seven. The next thing we're going to do is to find out what the median average is. And to do this, you need to put all of your data in numerical order, and then you find the number that's in the middle of the data set. And our median average for this data set is 121. Looking at our challenge question, why is the mode average unsuitable for this set of data? Well, the mode average is the most common value in your data set. And in this data set, we've got two lots of 118. We've got two lots of 120. We've got two lots of 122. We've got two lots of 123, two lots of 124, two lots of 125, and two lots of 133. 
So the mode isn't suitable for this data set because there's actually seven modes. Next, the class decided that it would be better to put the data in a frequency table like this one. And for your next task, what I'd like to do is to go through this data set and for each number, find the range that it falls within and then put a tally in its frequency column. So if I was to look at this 121 up here, I would find it on my frequency table, which is just there. And then in its frequency box, I would put one tally. I'd then move down to 124, and then I'll find the range that it falls in, and it falls in this 121 to 125 again, and I'll put another tally in that frequency box. And I'll keep going until I've done it for all of my data. And if you really want a challenge, you can suggest why using ranges makes it easier to process the data. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. If you've got a completed frequency table, let's have a look at what it's supposed to look like. So, starting from the top, you've got a frequency of 1 in 101 to 105, a frequency of 3 in 106 to 110, a frequency of 2 in 111 to 115, 8 in the 116 to 120, 9 in the 121 to 125, 3 in the 126 to 130, and 3 in the 131 to 135. And when we do these frequency tables, you'll often see that there is a range that your data falls within. This makes it easier for us to look for patterns in the data. So now that we've got our completed frequency table, we're going to plot a histogram. Now a histogram is a special kind of bar chart which we use to plot continuous data. So in your histogram, each of your bars should be touching. And if you've got enough people in your data set, then your histogram should have a very similar shape to that histogram. We call this shape a distribution curve. Sometimes it's referred to as a bell curve because it has a bell-like shape. So for your next task, what I want you to do is to use the data in this frequency table to plot a histogram. And if you really want a challenge, then you can suggest the reason why your graph has a different shape to the graph that we have on screen. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. You got that histogram drawn? Let's have a look at what a model graph would look like. Now, there are some similarities between the shape of this graph and the shape of the last graph, but the reason why we don't get that characteristic bell curve in this graph is because we didn't sample enough people. If we sampled all the students within a year group, we are more likely to get a distribution curve which has that characteristic bell shape. So now we've calculated some mean averages and median averages for some continuous data. We've also plotted this data as a histogram. So next we need to have a look at what sort of variation will be considered discontinuous data. And this is any variation that can only be placed into a limited number of groups. Things like sex, male or female, like blood group, there's only four blood groups. Eye colour, whether or not your earlobes are attached, whether or not people can roll their tongue. And shoe size. Shoe size, you do get a numerical value. But remember our definition for continuous data, it has to be able to have any value within a range. And when we buy shoes, we tend to have whole sizes, so size six, size seven, size eight. We also have half sizes, so you can buy a six, a six and a half, a seven, a seven and a half. Very rarely do you see a quarter size, but you can't have one sixth of a size, you can't have one eighth of a size, so you can't have any value within a range. So although if you plotted shoe size, you would still get a curve that looks like a distribution curve, it is not considered continuous data because you cannot have any value between the range. So next, we're going to have a look at a set of discontinuous variation. And our student has collected the data for the months everyone in the class was born. And this data has already been sorted into a frequency table. Now, our task is going to be to use this data to plot a bar chart. And we use bar charts when we are concerned with discontinuous data. So if there's only a limited number of categories. And the easiest way to spot the difference between our histogram and our bar chart is that in a bar chart, the bars do not touch. So there needs to be space between each one of your bars. And if you really want a challenge, which of the three averages could you use to analyze this data? And I'd like to explain your answer to that. 
I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. We've got that bar chart plotted. Let's have a look at what this bar chart would look like. You can see that we don't get that distribution curve that we have when we have continuous data. So which one of our three averages could we use to analyze this data? Well, we can't use the mean and we can't use the median because we don't have numerical values. So we can't add them all together and divide by how many there is, and we can't put them in numerical order. But what we can do is we can look for the most common. And the most common in this graph is really easy to see because it's the values with the biggest bars. So we can say that July and November are the most common. They are the mode. So now we can describe the difference between continuous and discontinuous. And we've plotted histograms for continuous data and plotted bar charts for discontinuous data. Which means we've only got one more thing left to do and that is our plenary. Now I'd like you to copy and complete this table. So we've got four data sets, shoe size, head circumference, whether or not someone is right or left-handed and favorite color. What I'd like you to do is to say whether or not that data set would be continuous or discontinuous and whether or not you would represent it in a histogram or a bar chart. And if you really want a challenge, can you list more data sets that would be continuous data? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you copied and completed your table? Let's have a look at this shoe size. Remember, we said that shoe size was discontinuous data because you cannot have any value between the smallest and the biggest shoe size, which means we're going to be plotting it as a bar chart. Our head circumference, that is an example of continuous data. We can have the smallest and the largest, and we can have any value between that range. So we're going to be plotting that on a histogram. Whether or not someone is right or left-handed is going to be discontinuous data because we're only going to have two different groups that we can sort people into. That means we're going to be using a bar chart to represent our data. And favorite color is going to be another example of discontinuous data. Again, we're only going to have a limited number of groups to be able to sort our sample into. This means that we're going to be using a bar chart to represent our data. Did you think of any more data sets which could be considered continuous data? If you did, I'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. And that brings us to the end of our lesson. I'll see you next time.